What's up, everybody? Welcome to the channel. I'm Amateur Radio Call Sign W9FFF Ham Radio Dude. And today we're going to take a look at this little device here, which is a Yaesu FH2 replacement. In fact, this was only $20 on LI Express. Could it be any good? And in case you don't know, the FH2 from Yaesu is a remote keyer. It should work with the FT891 and the 991 and the DX10. So I'm going to test the 891 today and see how this functions and is it any good for $20 because the Yaesu FH2 is uh, about four times that price. Let's jump into things and get started. Little nifty device here, it's called the Gradeline Technology and as I mentioned it replaces allegedly the FH2 from Yaesu. My initial observations on this are that it actually seems to be of decent build. Now for $20 is what this cost assembled. I should mention for $16, you can get this not assembled, so you'd have to build it yourself, but it would come with all the parts. I figured I'd take the gamble, and uh, we'll take a look in there later, because I'm not sure about those soldering jobs. As we see, a lot of items coming out of LA Express don't have the greatest uh, craftsmanship, if you will, but we'll take a look at that later. Uh, so this device here, it does have the same amount of buttons, I believe, that the Yaesu FH2 has, and I've never used a Yaesu FH2, but the buttons on the Yaesu FH2 are keypad style and they appear to be soft. I don't think they make any noise when you press them. And my first observation is these buttons do make noise. Let me put this up to the microphone. So that could be an inconvenience or kind of annoying to some people. Other than that, the uh, three parts or the three boards that are on here are made of PCB boards, I believe. With the middle PCB board being the one that holds all the electronics and the top and the bottom just supporting the buttons and then having a nice bottom flat. On the side or the back side of the device, we have a lock switch and you can probably not see it, but right here is where we would plug in our, there it is, we would plug in our cable to go to the back of the Yaesu FT891. And we'll do that here in just a second as well. Some of the things that I should probably mention before we tear this apart though, is you'll see one, two, three, four, and five on here which are keypad numbers, but you don't see six, seven, eight, nine, or zero. And I think this is like six, seven, eight, nine, no, six, seven, eight, nine, zero. Something along those lines, and we're gonna have to figure that out, but uh, that's gonna be confusing. I guess I could probably just write with marker the numbers here, here, and here, because I probably wouldn't remember it. But other than that, though, we could hit the memory button and then hit one. We should be able to then use this to record a predefined message for voice, like, CQ, CQ, this is Whiskey 9, Fox, Fox, Fox. Same thing with 2, 3, 4, and 5. So we could have five different voice memories to call. Uh, maybe there's more. We'll have to take a look at that. Uh, then the PB button, I think if we hit this, we should be able to manually type in a frequency. We'll try that too here in just a second. But maybe uh, these change the actual frequencies too. I guess the best thing for us to do is let's hook it up to the 891 and actually see if it even functions. Okay, we are on the back of the FT891, and here we're going to see three different uh, inputs, if you will. Uh, I have right here a cable that did not come with the device, but this cable should actually work, and we're going to plug it here into the one furthest to the left, closest to the USB, and I believe that's called the REM for remote jack. And then on this device itself, we already kind of mentioned it, but where the lock is, we're just going to plug it in right there. Now let's go back to the front of the radio and test this thing out. We got the radio here on 10 meters and we have this device hooked up. Now I'm not going to go through all the menu settings that stuff you have to enable and disable. It is in the manual for the FT891 and it should be the same as the FH2. So just go to the manual and look up the FH2. But there are a couple of key points here. If I go to function setting or the record setting, I'm going to disable PB right now. PB basically makes it so that uh, this device is enabled uh, for transmitting purposes. So here we go, it's off. And uh, now we should be able to tap memory. We'll see the record is flashing, but I need to tell this device what channel one through five I want to record on. So I'm gonna tap one, but I wasn't quick enough. There's, a, there's like a reset feature after a couple seconds. So memory one, it's flashing. Whiskey nine, Foxtrot, Foxtrot, Foxtrot. And then what I did is I tapped memory to disable the recording function after I got done recording. If I don't tap memory, it'll keep recording silent air, which 
you don't want to do. Now I could play it back to see if I like it. And you'll notice I wasn't transmitting, it was just playing it back to me. So that sounded okay. And uh, maybe I'll record another one on channel two and we'll say CQ Parks on the Air or something. CQ Parks on the Air, CQ Parks on the Air. This is Whiskey Niner, Foxtrot, Foxtrot, Foxtrot calling CQ Parks on the Air. CQ Parks on the Air, CQ Parks on the Air. This is Whiskey Niner, Foxtrot, Foxtrot, Foxtrot calling CQ Parks on the Air. And I don't like that because there was a little bit of a delay at the end, so I'm going to try again. CQ Parks on the Air, CQ Parks on the Air. This is Whiskey Niner, Foxtrot, Foxtrot, Foxtrot calling CQ Parks on the Air. CQ Parks on the Air, CQ Parks on the Air. This is Whiskey Niner, Foxtrot, Foxtrot, Foxtrot calling CQ Parks on the Air. I'm good with that, and I could fill up the rest of the frequent or the rest of the channels with voice memory features if I wish to do so. But also now I want to kind of make note of these yellow buttons. These yellow buttons will actually change the VFO finely. So left and right will do a fine tune. Oh, I'm wrong. Left and right will do a, a larger tune. You'll see 217, 317, 417, and so on. And then up and down will do the fine tune. So right now I'm on 28.417.8090 and 2814. So that's kind of nice. Uh, other than that though, if I hit the PB button, okay, you're gonna see right now there's a flashing two. That means I could type in a frequency. So let's try to go to 14.285. And again, these are confusing, right? So I think it's five, six, seven, eight, and then five, and then zero, zero. You'll notice though, I typed it in and there's still a flashing zero. I have to hit PB in order to change the frequency there it is cool that works let's go back to 10 meters real quick cool we're back on 28417 so that seems to work okay and now we want to make sure of course that it's going to transmit and in order to do that we are going to tap on the function button a couple of times we're going to enable PB. Now that we've enabled PB, I should be able to hit just number one. And we should be able to see a transmit right here. Whiskey 9, Foxtrot, Foxtrot, Foxtrot. And uh, that worked. So, so far, everything seems to be good. Well, we can't forget about CW also, right? And in order to do CW, the radio's smart enough to know that if you're in CW mode, it's going to reference the CW memories. If you're in voice mode, it's gonna reference the voice memories. So it's kind of the same concept here, uh, but one of the things is if we wanna record channel one, we really can't use this. Like we could hit memory and it'll go to the record and we could hit one and it'll bring us to the text portion. That's all good, but we can't scroll through the text using this. So it's not like a keypad to type in your call sign or whatever your CQ message is for CW Morse code. Uh, it, it doesn't work that way. So, you know, I went ahead and I made a generic W9FFF text in here and I'm gonna hit back and uh, I could make sure I like that, right? So all I gotta do then is hit one. And then it's still playing, which I find odd, but it's probably something I did wrong in that text. It's still playing, but it's not hearing anything. I think I have to enable two things. Number one, I have to enable break-in. Okay, and now that break-in is enabled, uh, maybe I can go here and enable PB, and this is gonna transmit it too. But before we transmit it, let's see if it stops that then. Okay, perfect. So there was a long pause after the play. It still shows it's playing, but after we enabled break and it did transmit and it only did the call sign. So we should be good there. Uh, very nice. So that seems to work as well. CW's working. Uh, let's go back to the house, tear this apart. But before we do that, I wanna talk real quick about just a few more things while we're here. For $20, it's from LA Express. So far, it seems like a good deal. I do want to mention, though, uh, the shipping time. 
LI Express, everything's shipped from China, and this actually only took about two and a half weeks to receive. However, some other stuff I ordered from that order, it, they're still just waiting, and it's been, uh, I think, nearly a month now. So that is a little bit concerning, so don't expect it to be really quick. However, from my experience, it, it was relatively okay. I'm going to wait two and a half, three weeks, maybe even a month in order to save 75% uh, of the cost of an FH2. I thought that was kind of kind of noteworthy. The, the big factor will be when we go home right now and we tear this apart to see the quality internally. And off hand, I actually think that I could not do a better job. So, so far, I'm impressed. Let's get to the house and finish this up. I am in the office and I realize if I just unscrew those four Allen screws, I should be all right to see the bottom of the board and the solder traces. So let's get started. Here it is. And I kind of expected it to be semi poor uh, from looking at it externally, but I've seen worse, seen better. There's a couple of cold solder joints like right here where my thumb is. The, the, the solder job leaves a lot to be desired. So uh, we can take that into consideration though. Remember for 16 bucks, you could just get the kit and you could do it yourself. Uh, or for 20 bucks, you can get some quality like this. Everything seems to work. So that's a, a good sign, but that's kind of what you see. You know what, let's flip it over here and look at the inside of the other side. I just realized something too. This is kind of cool. On the other side of that bottom piece, it actually has all the dimensions and a website. That website goes to some eBay-like page, so just ignore that. But it's 100 millimeters in total width, and then 90 millimeters from screw to screw, 60 meters in uh, millimeters in total uh, height, and then 50 millimeters from screw to screw. So this is a cool little thing here because it makes prototyping a case a lot easier if I ever do decide to make a case for this in the future. Disassembling the top here, we'll see just the layout of the board. And yeah, we do see the resistors in place by the buttons and the different resistant values, I believe, are what tells the radio, hey, uh, I'm giving you this value, so go to this menu. I'm giving you this value, so activate, you know, voice one and so forth. But yep, just a bunch of resistors and a button. It got a capacitor and it uh, looks pretty simple. I did also forget to mention the DEC button, which is the red button here, that could work as a counter for CW. So if you're in a contest and I think it's like decrease or increase, you could hit it and it'll, it's supposed to count for you as I understand. Um, I did not test that. I assume it works, everything else seems to work. Uh, let's go ahead and wrap things up. $80 is the savings that you get if you purchase this pre-assembled over the FH2. And this FH2 alternative, notice I didn't say clone, it doesn't say Yezu and it doesn't look like a Yezu. It's not bad, it does everything it's supposed to do. Uh, but we do keep in mind that maybe some of the soldering internally wasn't the greatest. And maybe I got a good batch, maybe I got a bad batch. We just don't know until we see others who have bought this and, and could look inside. But remember also for $16, you could buy the kit and you could basically build it yourself. And it wouldn't be hard for anybody who's even new to build it themselves. Something else to keep in mind, this didn't come with instructions. So you would be on your own building it. Although you probably could look online at many tutorials on how to build your own FH2 and follow the tutorials to find out which resistors go where. The choice is yours. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Thanks for checking out the channel. I'm Ham Radio Dude 73.